Hello and welcome to a video from FilmsByChris.com. I'm Chris. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And uh, I'm going to have to explain this video. <laughs> this, this is, let, let me just show you what it does, the script does. Then I'll explain scenarios where you might want to do something like this. And then we'll look at the code, okay? So I'm in a directory with a script I just called bar.sh. It's already executable. I can dot slash to run it. And now it says welcome. And at this point, I can use either the S key to add an equal sign to the line or an A key to subtract the equal sign. It'll let me go down to one and if I hold down S, you can see it's drawing all the way out and I have it set to stop 10 characters from the end of the screen, okay? Why would you wanna do this? Um, so just a scenario where maybe you want to have a bar that represents a power level or a volume level. I have, for example, a controller knob. It's just a knob that has a USB plug that I can program to do anything. Maybe I want to write a shell script that it controls the brightness of the screen or the, the volume, and I want to display a, a bar, a power bar, a percentage bar, using you know just equal signs or other characters in the shell. Well, this is how you would do that. So that's, that's a scenario you would do this, but also it's just, this script's gonna help you build your skills. There's things in here that you would use in different cases. You're gonna learn a few things. So let's go ahead and look at the bar sh. And there'll be a link in the description to the script online. And the script probably could be cleaned up a little bit. Again, this is a script I wrote years ago. Anytime I look at scripts I wrote years ago, I'm like, I bet I could shorten this up. But you know what, shortening up doesn't always make it more readable you know, for people who are trying to learn how to do stuff. So first of all, our script starts off with our shebang line that tells your system use bash this is a bash script okay uh, and you can see I wrote this back in 2018 I'm finally getting around to doing a video on it uh, on my copyright notice there okay GPL license so just use it however you want uh, as long as it falls under you know the GPL guidelines okay we're gonna set a variable B we're saying B to zero we're saying let B equal zero that's just one way in bash to say this is a number because we're gonna do some math on it okay then we're gonna have our main function, which is called at the bottom of the script. Technically, I don't need to put this into a function for since it's the only thing in the script. But if you wanna use this functionality in other scripts, you could rename this, bring it into a script, and then just call that function. Uh, it's just keeping things clean. Uh, we're gonna print welcome to the screen, and then we're gonna start our main loop here. So what are we gonna do? So the uh, I think the only external command outside of bash that we're gonna be using is tput. Uh, to get the number of columns. Th th there is a way to do that natively in Bash. I'm pretty sure I have a video on that. But a lot of people, when you look this up, uh, use tput. tput is commonly installed on systems, but not always, almost always, it's in your repositories. Uh, but in this case, it's just giving us the number of characters, the number of columns or the characters across a screen. Because that number can vary depending on how big your window size is, what font size you're using, um, you, you know, stuff like that. So it's going to say, get the number of columns, I'm, in this case, I'm saying run this command, t put columns, and subtract whatever number that gives from 10. And I just did that to do math, just to keep it away from the edge of the screen, just because. <laughs> just, again, a learning example. Then we're going to use the read command. Now, the read command, you've probably seen and used a lot. It's to get user input. Lots of times you just say read. You might give it a prompt and then a variable. And then whatever the, type, the user types and hits enter, it puts it into that variable. Well, here we're going to give it some arguments, which is basically saying only accept one character, and as soon as they hit a character on the keyboard, continue. Don't wait for them to press enter, okay? So anytime you hit a key on the keyboard, it's gonna continue. So let me show you, let me exit out of the script, let me run the script, and you can see I'll hit K, right? L, J, H, K, J, I, O, nothing's happening, right? I can hit S, and it adds, A, and it subtracts. So let's continue our script and see exactly what it's doing there. So it's looking for one character. Uh, and then it's going to echo that one equal sign, which happened when I hit the, uh, the initial K. Uh, but then we're going to go, okay, we only have two options that we want to look for. If it's if X, the character that's hit, is A, well, then we're going to take our B from the top here, which starts off as zero, and we are going to subtract one from it. If it is S, then we're going to add one from it to it. Okay, but then we need to check. Okay, B, if it's less than one, set it to one, that's setting a minimum, so we don't go to zero or negative numbers. And then we're gonna say, okay, is B greater than the number of columns, which is the number of columns or characters minus 10 in this case. If it is, then just set it to the number of columns. That makes us so we can't go past the max. That's called clamping. So we're clamping it from one to however many characters uh, we're allowing on the screen, okay? Now, this command, echo. 
whoops, echo dash N E and then inside quotations backslash R. What are we doing here? So N means no new line character because normally with when you use the echo command, it automatically N goes to a new line, it car uh, uh, carriage returns. And then E says, you know, look at these as special characters. So we're doing backslash R, it's not a backslash R, it's saying do something special. Basically what this is saying is go back to the beginning of the line. Don't start a new line, go back to the beginning of the current line. Okay, so we've checked what keys were pressed, we check whether they're in the minimum or maximum, then we're going to go back to the beginning of the current line, and then what are we going to do? Well, now we're going to again look at the actual number of columns on the screen, and we're going to loop through that and just print a space character with no new line character. That's erasing anything on the current line, basically. It's not really erasing, it's putting space uh, spaces on that. And so what that does is when we are adding the equal sign, when we start moving the other way, it makes sure that it clears out anything past that. It's basically just clearing the line. That's what we're doing here. We're going back to the beginning of the line and then we're clearing the line just by putting spaces across the entire thing. Then once we've cleared the line, we're all the way at the right side of the screen. We're gonna go back to the beginning of the line. So all the way to the left side of the screen. And then we're gonna loop. Uh, just I as an integer, it's, it's just, a variable we're creating. It doesn't really matter because uh, we're not even going to use it. We're going to say for this and then we're going to use the sequence command and we're going to say start at one and loop however whatever b equals. So it can be anywhere from one to however many characters can fit on the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to print the equal sign without a new line character. I hope that all made sense. It will loop forever and once the loop is broken somehow we will exit out of the script. So again we run that and I can hit S and if I hold down S it goes all the way down and you'll see every once in a while the cursor you'll see it flip around that's just the computer running a little slower and you will see um, I'm not sure if it's picking up and recording it it happens occasionally you'll see it flicker and that's it jumping in the beginning of the line printing all the way down the line jumping in the beginning of the line and then jump then printing out to where you are uh, but yeah that's how you can print a line of characters on a screen with a key press or some sort of input again like a controller knob I, I, I'm really trying to think of what to call this video like a bar output, level output. Um, but yeah, so if I have that knob, I could be controlling the volume, but also showing the output on the screen of what the volume level is based on that, or something along those lines. Again, I don't see this you using this exact script you know, a whole lot, but the techniques we're using in it can be useful in many scripts, and I just thought I'd show uh, give a demonstration of that. The, the script, there'll be a link to it in the description of this video, so you can grab it and play around with it. I do thank you for watching, and as always, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the Gay. There's a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Visit my website. Search through my videos. Check out my Patreon page. I also have Libre Pay and PayPal if you want to support me that way. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.